All right, we have a lot we need to talk about in regards to Clean Spark today. If you've been living under a rock, I feel bad for you because so much has happened over the last 24 hours. Stuff that even surprised me, which I'll discuss in today's video as well. But yeah, we're going to address the elephant in the room, dilution and insider selling. And then we're going to get into expansion, growth, acquisitions, a much more happy topic later on in this video. Uh, whoever you are out there, if, if you're new here returning or, you know, you're not even a subscriber... Just hear, hear me out, what I'm, what I'm about to say, and then afterwards, let me know down in the comment section below your thoughts and opinions about this situation. I like to hear from everybody, and on that note, if you're not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. Hit the subscribe button. I think I'm like one of the fastest growing stock market YouTubers currently, and it's thanks to this amazing community, you guys watching this video. I'm incredibly blessed by you guys. But yeah, if you're new here, returning, not yet subscribed, be sure you subscribe down below. But let's address this elephant in the room. After hours yesterday, CleanSpark stock was down 10% on the heels of the company announcing a brand new $800 million at the market offering. So this is $800 million worth of shares that the company will be selling to the open markets at some point in the future. So if you're a shareholder of CleanSpark like me, you've just been diluted. Now, what's troubling about this isn't necessarily the dilution because in the past, the management team has been really good at accretive dilution, which long story short, just means that they make good investments that end up adding more value per share than the dilution takes away per share. They've been very good at this in the past. I, I can't think of a single time or decision they've made that I can point at and say, that wasn't a creative. That wasn't a good decision for the shareholders. I mean, CleanSpark's management team has been great at this sort of thing. But the reason this time is a little bit different and it's come into question is because recently, for the first time ever in the company's history, insiders have been selling their shares. Whether it be the executive chairman, Matthew Schultz, the CEO, Zachary Bradford, or the CFO, Gary Vecchiarelli, I think is how you say it. It's a long last name and it's a complicated last name. They've all sold a relatively large portion of their holdings, 10 to 20%. They still hold a lot of their stock. But the trouble with this is they did these sales just over the last week and the week before. And then now all of a sudden, just conveniently, they announced this ATM program, this dilution that tanked the stock 10% after hours. So there's a lot of people out there that are jaded a little bit and concerned that the management team just sold their shares because they knew they were going to announce this huge new at-the-market offering deal. And that's a legitimate concern. I'll explain to you why I don't think it's a concern, but first I want to explain to you why I'm so shocked about it. And I have to go to my tweet here that I posted the other day. I said, whether it was pre-planned or not, management selling right before announcing an amendment increasing its ATM to $800 million is not a good look. This is the stuff that kills credibility and trust, which is hard to earn. There you go. That last little phrase, earning credibility and trust, hard to earn, but easy to take away. And as I already mentioned, every single decision that I think of in the company's history, since I've been a shareholder for four and a half years, has been accretive to shareholders. It's been conscious, conscientious, whatever the word is there, of public opinion, public interpretation. Uh, also, they've been very mindful of the optics behind every decision they've made. That's why I was so shocked about this. Every single decision that this management team has made since I've been a shareholder for four and a half years has been mindful of this stuff. It's earned credibility and trust, which is probably a lot of the reason CleanSpark stock has outperformed all the other mining stocks in the rest of the space. It's because investors, Wall Street, lenders, everybody trusts them. They have credibility and a move like this, because it looks so bad and the optics of it are so bad, really threatens that credibility and trust that took so long to earn. But I finished this tweet with, they must really see an opportunity that can't wait. The reason I say this is because it doesn't fit into the mold. This move that they made doesn't fit into the mold of what the management team is and has been. The only way I see this making sense they must really see an opportunity that can't wait. And that's the other side of this we kind of need to think think of or think from is let's say 
because the optics were bad and the management team knew it, they didn't go ahead and make this ATM offering. Well, then all of a sudden, chances are there's a deal or opportunity out there that they should take advantage of that would be accretive to shareholders that they can't take advantage of now because they didn't go through with the ATM program. Well, that too, on the other end of the spectrum, is not being a good steward for shareholders. So while it's easy to view this from our side of things and kind of put on our retail blinders, they also have a duty to take care of shareholder capital and invest it properly. And if they see an opportunity that can't wait, they simply can't afford to hold off on a new dilution program because the optics around it are bad. And the other note with this is that these sales were not them going to the markets on these days and hitting the sell button. They have what's called the 10B5-1 trading plan, which basically allows them to schedule sales of their stock well in advance because if you guys aren't familiar, if you're in possession of material non-public information, it is illegal to trade on that information. And when you're a company like CleanSpark, who's growing like CleanSpark, you are rarely not in possession of MNPI, material non-public information, which means you never have windows that you can buy or sell stock. Well, with this 10B5-1 trading plan, they can set all of that to the side and schedule when they're going to buy shares of stock or more commonly when they're going to sell shares of the personal stock they own. To my knowledge, and again, I've been a shareholder for four and a half years or so, this is the first time the management team has sold shares of the company. I'm personally not concerned with the insider selling. I was more concerned with the optics around it. And the more I think about it from their vantage point, again, I think there's probably an opportunity that they couldn't wait for, and that's why they went ahead with this ATM offering, got it out there, and my guess is we're going to hear some really big expansion news coming soon from the company. And I know I keep saying it, but the management team is not dumb, believe it or not. They realize that even an ATM offering program is material non-public information. If they trade off of that information, that is illegal insider trading. They're not dumb. They realized that, again, the, these sales were scheduled way in advance. Think about it. We're at the end of Q1 2024. They scheduled these sales for the end of this quarter, and they're going to sell no matter what. And then yet another aspect of this is the fact that from January through March, the first like three months of this year, they sold 34 million shares and had proceeds of $500 million dollars. If the management team was really in this to get the most bang for their buck when they sold their shares, they wouldn't have diluted $500 million worth of shares before hitting the sell button, right? So if you're out there thinking that the management team just played all of the retail investors out there, you're you're sorely mistaken and I'm I'm sorry I'm breaking that news to you but it's 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 just not true. It's not true. First of all, it's unlawful and a 4 billion dollar company is aware of that. They have general counsel that makes sure things like this don't happen so they don't get sued. It's it's just not realistic. These were pre-planned sales. The management team has always been mindful of shareholders and investors and I don't think that's ever going to change. So this morning I went ahead and posted another new tweet kind of clarifying my position around this saying I have zero problem with CleanSpark looting via an ATM. In fact, it was obvious something was coming. The optics of it were terrible though and not something I'm accustomed to seeing out of CleanSpark's front office. I've been an investor in this company for four plus years and usually they're very careful about public reputation and investors trust. That's why I'm so shocked. This just doesn't fit into the mold of who CleanSpark's management team is. The only way it makes sense is if they're going to announce their next stage of aggressive expansion very soon. I think that's next in their playbook. It's evident that they've been hitting the ATM hard recently. We discovered during the first three months they fully tapped out their previous ATM for $500 million. And then I say for fun, here's a picture of me from the first time I talked about CleanSpark on my YouTube channel. If you think I'm young now, I was really young back then. I'll just pull this up quickly. Um, I don't know if I had even two hairs on my nutsack back then. Just look at me. <laughs> so, you know... 
I've, I've grown up with this company and that's kind of how I finished out this tweet. I said, I've basically grown up with this company and believe I understand the ins and outs better than almost anybody else because of it. Pretty crazy to think how far this company has come. It was a $30 million company. Think about this. It was a $30 million company when I found it and I first invested in it. Now it's a $4 billion plus company. I invested in a management team and it's worked out great for me. I have 100% trust in the management team to deliver value to shareholders. And then here's a picture of Matthew Schultz from the first interview he did on my YouTube channel a long time ago, four years ago, just kind of crazy stuff. But I do want to talk about briefly, like the most common response I got to these tweets was Rex, you're way too emotional with your investing decisions or you're a child. You have a lot of growing up to do. Or people your age used to go fight wars. Get with it. Things like this. And I have to say, that's a pretty annoying response because you know what? When everybody else was emotional and didn't want anything to do with Clean Spark stock at $2 per share, you can go back on my channel and watch my videos. I was buying the stock. I said it was undervalued while everybody else was laughing at me, calling me names. Where were these people that are calling me emotional right now? Where were they at? They weren't buying clean spark stock. And I think back to the end of 2022, the beginning of 2023, me putting out videos on my channel saying the stock market was going to perform great in 2023. And those videos were some of my worst performing videos ever. You know, like 15% dislike ratios, which is insane for YouTube. It takes a lot for somebody to hit the dislike button, but it's because everybody disagreed with me. And then I think about, you know, all of the heck I've given Marathon Digital over the last couple of years. People calling me names, people attacking me personally, my family members, my girlfriend, saying horrible things about me and the people closest to me. And you know what? Everything I said about Marathon has been proven true. Everything I said about the stock market at the end of 2022, beginning of 2023 has proven true. Despite all of these awful things people have said about me and they've, they've called me, right? Despite all of that, and you're saying I'm emotional about my investing decisions, you are way out of bounds if you are saying that. I literally thrive in environments of going against the grain, going against what everybody else in the stock market thinks and says. The way you succeed in the stock market is by finding companies and investments that the rest of the market is mispricing. By definition, it's a very lonely road. And just to end this note, because I don't want to go too far into this tangent. And again, usually I just let my, my work speak for itself, but I, I have to get this off my chest. Uh, if it forces you to unsubscribe, I completely understand. But, but another thing I think of is when I was calling CleanSpark the best investment opportunity in the Bitcoin mining space, and everybody out there was calling me names and nobody was agreeing with me. They were pointing the finger at me saying, I don't know anything. Where were you? If you're calling me emotional about my investing decisions right now, where were you during all of these time periods? When I was buying at the end of 2022, when nobody else wanted to, when I was buying CleanSpark at $2 a share, where were you? I'm guessing both time periods you were fearful, investing with your emotions, doing exactly what you're telling me not to do because you believed all of the doom and gloom that was out there in the media. Huh. And the reason I know they weren't around is because other than me and some of my most dedicated followers out there, nobody else was early to this. Me and my most dedicated followers, we're, we're just sitting here chilling on an 8x of our money. 8x of our money while we have people that bought at 15, 16, 17 dollars giving me my gains, telling me that I'm too emotional about my investing. When I was the one that went against the grain and bought when nobody else wanted the stock. It's just crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy world. But again, I, I'm, I'm promising myself today that I'm not going to come back here again and try and, you know, I, I like to be humble. I don't want to, I don't want to brag I, I don't, I'm, that's not who I am. That's not who I want to be. I don't want to be back here, but man, I had to get this off my chest because some of the people that I thought were closest to me and followed me the closest are the people that are attacking me for being too emotional. Like what, 
What is going on here? So from here on out, I encourage you to keep close track of my moves. I'm not going to be right 100% of the time, but dang it, my track record is pretty dang good. So I'm going to let my track record speak for itself, good or bad. I'm going to let it do the talking. I think um, my success recently has spoken for itself. I'm a 22-year-old investor that has a YouTube channel about the stock market with 31,000 subscribers. That in itself is going against the grain and defying the odds. I should not be in this position at my age to have this many people that listen to me about the stock market and investing. And kind of the cool thing about this, and I'll throw it up on the screen, 95.6% of my audience is older than me. Older than me. I am going against the grain. It's what I've done my whole life. I'm going to leave it at that and vow never to get to this braggadocious side of myself ever again because I hate it. I hate it so much, but I have to get it off my chest. I just, it's unbelievable the things I've, I've seen and heard from people. Unbelievable. But let's go ahead and discuss the happy side of things now. The expansion, growth, and acquisitions. I already talked about how... Th through the first three months of this year, the company sold 34 million shares for gross proceeds of $500 million. That is a lot of dilution for three months. But guess what? Let's see what the stock's done year to date. Year to date, CleanSpark stock is still up basically 100%. Despite $500 million worth of shares being added to the markets, it's up 94.94%. There is no other stock in the Bitcoin mining space that's even remotely close. And over the past year, I've done the math on this, the company has diluted $1 billion, with a B, $1 billion worth of shares into the open markets. $1 billion over the past year. And the stock is up basically 700%. Again, there is no second closest. CleanSpark is leading by a wide margin, even despite all of this dilution that's taken place. And why would that be? Well, it goes back to what I've said in the past. CleanSpark has been very good with their dilution, using the capital that they raise to invest into accretive opportunities to shareholders. So CleanSpark has kind of turned the tables with dilution and investors in the space trust CleanSpark to execute. Trust CleanSpark to deliver. Trust CleanSpark to give back shareholders more value per share than the dilution takes away. So unless you think that's going to change, CleanSpark will always trade at a premium to the other Bitcoin mining stocks. You know, people out there like to say CleanSpark is so overvalued compared to the other Bitcoin mining stocks. Well, have you considered that maybe CleanSpark is appropriately valued? and the other stocks maybe are just slightly undervalued, there's a reason that the markets assign premium to certain companies. A lot of it has to do with efficiency, execution, and delivering on promises, which CleanSpark has done in the past. And personally, I think they'll continue to do in the future. But that's, a, that's the decision you have to make as a shareholder or potential shareholder. Do you think their execution continues? If it does you're going to perform very well as a shareholder if the price of Bitcoin goes up. But if that changes, which is possible, the opposite's probably true. You're going to underperform from here on out. But just because CleanSpark trades at a premium to all the other Bitcoin mining companies does not necessarily mean it's overvalued. So let's think about this. Going into the Bitcoin halving event, which takes place in two or three weeks, CleanSpark is now a company with zero debt. They're also a company with a Bitcoin hodl balance of essentially 5,000 coins. And they have half a billion dollars in cash. And even without more mergers and acquisitions, they're on pace and on track to hit 20 exahash per second. Based on the research I've done, I don't think there's another player out there that's positioned as well as CleanSpark is going into this halving event. I'll put up on the screen now a video of Zachary Bradford discussing this and how they expect mergers and acquisitions to be the near-term and medium-term growth catalysts for the company. Our expectation and what we've communicated is that we will absolutely be growing. 
Um, we expect to exercise the option on, on that, which was another 100,000 machines that would push us up towards 50x hash. Um, the only thing we haven't given guidance on is time, but we're incredibly confident that we will um, reach those points. Um, what we're excited about, maybe to talk a little bit of strategy on this, um, and again, I'm speaking kind of broad strokes, um, again, no timing on this, M&A, we're very excited about the prospects. We say this every time we're, we're on a call, but I'm going to continue to say it because halving provides a very unique opportunity. Weak, weaker players who have inefficient fleets and don't have capital to do a refresh of machines, they still have a great facility. It's an excellent opportunity to buy a data center and bring in the fleet that we just purchased and plug it in. We're already seeing those players you know, there's there's lots of you know offerings going on right now. There's lots of processes being run, and there's lots of private discussions, you know, happening. The, the market's a buzz with M and A activity, so it's just a matter of we want to take the very best opportunities, add them to our portfolio, and that's going to be our what I would call our near and medium term growth is going to be M and A based, and we're we're confident that we will execute on that on a timeline that's beneficial for everybody. And now I'll share with you a short clip of Matthew Schultz, the executive chairman discussing dilution and how they use it and have executed in the past. We've been very judicious about our use of equity. We told our shareholders two years ago that we would use equity if and when it was accretive within a couple of, of, of fiscal quarters. And we really stuck to our guns on that. I mean, Mike, you know, through the bank that, that, that is your employer, you know, we've gone through a couple of half billion dollar ATM transactions. And during that same period of time, our shares are up 672% in 12 months. That's because of that disciplined approach. We haven't done an overnight offering. We didn't do a convertible debenture. We took, we were very opportunistic when the market was strong. We, we raised capital when it made sense. And then we immediately deployed that capital. So I hope those two clips say something to you and help you decide whether or not you're going to be on the bullish side of clean spark and Bitcoin miners or the bearish side. I personally am on the bullish side and I'll show you that now in my price target spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is made available to all my paid monthly members. So if you want to support me as well as get a, access to a bunch of perks like stock picks, buy and sell alerts, uh, my spreadsheets, macro analysis, etc. Just tons of exclusive content. And you can support me and help me avoid all these sponsorships that other YouTubers take. I greatly appreciate it. No pressure, but you can hit the Patreon link in the pinned comment down below or at the join button located right next to the subscribe button. It's the cheapest membership on YouTube and I think you get the biggest bang for your buck. Again, if you don't find value, I have a 100% refund policy. So I'm very confident that I can provide enough value for you that it makes it beyond worth it to be a part of this membership while you can support me financially because I'm independent. I remain independent. I always will be independent and I will always be self-funded. I'll never take a paycheck from a company. It's just not in my morals. I've been offered upwards of $50,000 to talk about certain stocks. Don't even return their calls or emails. Uh, so if you want to support me again, feel free to do so. No pressure. If you're just a viewer, your support here on YouTube means a lot to me, more than you can even imagine. But anyways, this is my price target spreadsheet. You can see this year in 2024, which is a halving year. We have kind of already talked about that. I see... CleanSpark stock hitting $41.81 if Bitcoin hits a price of $100,000 per coin. I actually set this price target about a year ago. And again, at the time, it's just another example of when people were giving me so much crap. They thought this was a clown show YouTube channel. Me saying I thought CleanSpark could hit $40 in 2024. And me saying I thought Bitcoin could hit $100,000 in 2024. Now all of a sudden it looks like it's going to be light. I'm not going to change my projections here. I'm going to leave my Bitcoin price projection as $100,000. Just know it could go well above that this year. We don't know. But as of now, I still see 97.11% potential upside for the company this year in 2024, which is tremendous upside. Tremendous. And, you know, by 2030, if we hit over a million dollars per coin, which I personally believe will happen... The numbers get kind of stupid. I mean, we're talking over $1,000 per share of CleanSpark stock, even despite all of this dilution. I've factored this into my price target spreadsheets ahead of time. 
you'll see I have a variable rate for my assumed recurring share dilution, which makes sense. You're going to have to dilute less as a percentage of your overall shares outstanding to raise the same amount of money, especially if your share price is going up. I also have CleanSpark's total balance hitting 5,000 coins by the time the halving happens. It appears that's gonna be pretty spot on. And then by the end of this year, I have them having a total balance of 8,500 coins. By 2030, I have them having a total balance of 54,330. Now I need to make it clear I understand it's impossible, impossible to project things seven years out into the future, or I guess it's six now, years out into the future. Absolutely impossible. Things will change in this spreadsheet. This is kind of a best case scenario spreadsheet. It doesn't factor in any bear markets because quite honestly, nobody can predict them. Nobody knows when they're going to happen. And we might not even see one until 2030. There is zero guarantee, but if we do get a bear market of some sort, I will make adjustments to the spreadsheet and I will uh, update you here on this YouTube channel as well as if you are a paid monthly member. By 2030, I have the company commanding 9.09% .09 of the total Bitcoin network hash rate. Uh, another cool uh, page here I have in the spreadsheet tracks CleanSparks mining rig purchase orders. Uh, this is fully updated, I believe, and you can see their total exahash per second of their mining orders equates to 33 exahash per second. Again, they're kind of searching for infrastructure. They're searching probably for more mining rigs, uh, maybe some sort of merger and acquisition. It seemed to be talked about a lot by Zachary and Matthew in those interview clips that I showed you just a little bit ago. Uh, again, kind of a mess right now with Clean Spark stock. A lot of stuff going on. Um, my confidence hasn't wavered, though. I'm, I was just a little bit shocked at, at the antics and the optics behind... Uh, the move they made there, announcing dilution after they had sold a bunch of shares. But if you really dig into it a little bit deeper, start to understand it a little bit more. I want to be clear, there was some confusion about this dilution that's taking place. Some thought it was only an additional $300 million of dilution. It's actually a full $800 million of dilution. New dilution that's going to come into the stock. And again, if the company can execute and be accretive with the cash they raise... It's going to be very good for shareholders over the long term. And you can see that reflected in my price targets here going into 2030. So with that, again, if you're new here or returning and not yet subscribed, please subscribe down below. Let me know your thoughts on this whole situation in the comments section down below. Have a great rest of your day. Stay blessed. Keep 10 toes to the ground and your chin up. Peace out.